So when we meditate, we become more aware, more present, more focused, and more able to see things as they are, which is why it's a very helpful practice for leaders. And we might think of meditation um, as having several different gateways, if you like, several different ways in to the practice. And I'm going to just run through these now, and you might find that some of them feel more appealing to you than others. And what I can say is that a very helpful way into meditation is a meditation that we call concentration meditation. And that's simply taking an object. I like to take a candle, but it could be a, a glass or a book or a flower, any object at all. And make that object the center of your meditation. So when I take a candle, for example, I, I light it and I sit and simply look at it for a period of time. And what I notice over the period of looking at it is that it changes. I start to notice things about the actual shape of the candle that I hadn't noticed at first. And then if I look into the flame, I see different colours, different shapes, um, things that would simply elude me if I didn't bring my full concentration to, the, to looking at it. So concentration meditation is a very good way of training our mind to focus on one thing, to be less scattered, if you like, less distracted. So it's a great one to practice from time to time in any event. So this, and the second kind of meditation uh, I'd like to mention is, is what we call reflection meditation. So, you know, in our coaching sessions, um, we might agree that you're going to reflect on something, or you might in any event want to reflect on something that happened yesterday or the week before. Or you might notice that you're ruminating on something and it's bothering you, it's coming back to you, you can't let go of it. That's a perfect time to say, right, I'm going to take a few minutes to sit or go for a walk and reflectively meditate. Reflection meditation. So taking that thing that you want to think about and doing only that for a period of time. Noticing if other thoughts come in and coming back to the thing that you actually want to concentrate on and reflect on in order to understand it better, in order to look at it from all its different aspects, you know, to really get inside it and kind of pick it apart and, you know, ultimately probably to learn something. The third type of meditation that, uh, you know, I want to talk about here is what we call creative meditation. And that is when you want to cultivate a quality within you that you'd like more of. So the one that I always talk about for me, because it's the one I need more of, is patience. The whole of my life I've been um, trying <laughs> to become more patient. Um, I think I'm succeeding, but it's taken a long time. And what I've found is, is that when I meditate on the qualities of patience, it really helps. So I might sit and think, patience, how do I become more patient? What is it to feel patient? What does patience look like? In that thing last week when I was very impatient, what could I have done to be more patient? And I'll, I'll sit with it and explore it from every different angle. And so that by the end of the meditation, I, I have a sense of, you know, being more patient so that, you know, the next time my patience is tested, I might, you know, be able to bring the quality of patience to that context. The fourth kind of meditation, which we will be practicing later in the program when we come to explore fearless compassion, is um, heart-centered meditation or loving-kindness meditation, as it's known which is literally where we focus on uh, cultivating uh, more warmth and kindness and compassion um, from, a sen you know, from a, a sort of a felt sense around our heart, you know, kind of perhaps you know, bringing our awareness to our heart and, and feeling what it's like to feel warmth and kindness and love towards ourselves. 
and towards our friends and our family and our community, our, our village, our town, our city, our country, our world, our planet. So, it, you know, heart-centered meditation can extend its sort of rays of warmth as, you know, as far as you want. But it needs to start with us. So it's a beautiful meditation for kind of um, bringing a sense of, of, of warmth and kindness to ourselves, which helps us do that for others. And the fifth kind of meditation, which is actually the one we'll be doing most of throughout this program, is mindfulness meditation. And, you know, there's mindfulness in all the others, in the sense that in all the others there's a there's an awareness, you know, there's a con we're bringing a conscious awareness to the practice of concentration or reflection or creative or heart-centered meditation. But with mindfulness, it's, it's about just that. It's about cultivating uh, a receptive openness to what is happening now and a receptive openness which is accepting and non-judgmental. But when I say accepting, I don't mean, you know, breathe and it's all okay. No, I don't mean accepting in terms of, oh well, that's the way it is. I mean accepting what we're feeling in this moment, allowing it to be as it is, acknowledging what it is, so that we can be more aware and present with it and more consciously choiceful of how we respond. When we're not mindful of what's happening right now or of what we're feeling right now, we can move into a much more kind of reactive way, a more kind of reactive response and say and do things that we don't mean. Whereas if we acknowledge and accept how we're feeling now, our response will be more conscious, more deliberate. So mindfulness is the most wonderful practice. Mindfulness meditation is a wonderful practice for becoming more aware, more present, and therefore more choiceful. And when I think about mindfulness, I think what can be helpful is to think of three touch points. So when we're being mindful, we're setting an intention to pay attention to the present moment and accept it as it is. So intention, attention, acceptance. Three points. And when we set an intention to pay attention to the present moment, and accept it as it is, without judgment and with kindness. We're being mindful. So the other thing I'd like to just touch on before we move into a short practice together is what is happening when we meditate at a physiological level, if you like, within us. So Let's think of the opposite of being still and quiet and meditative. Let's think of being hyper alert, red alert, if you like, kind of anxious, stressed. If you like, when we're, when our, the sympathetic arm of our nervous system is stimulated continuously in a kind of a fight or flight response. Basically, when we're under stress and when we're stressed over a long period of time um, and our sympathetic nervous system is continually engaged and activated. Um, we're releasing chemicals, actually about 1400 chemicals continually buzzing around our body but the key ones we know about are adrenaline and cortisol and when we are continually in that state you know, it becomes exhausting, doesn't it? I mean really tiring. And what we do when we meditate is that we, we counterbalance that by engaging the parasympathetic arm of our nervous system, 
and we move into a place of kind of rest and digest. So from fight or flight, we move into rest and digest. And it's really important to do that because in, ga- in, in resting and digesting, in engaging the parasympathetic arm of our nervous system, we're bringing our nervous system into balance and we're enabling our brain, you know, that all the different as parts of our brain to be fully engaged. When we're in fight or flight, it's more the kind of the limbic area of our brain and the reptilian part of our brain which is engaged. It's the kind of, you know, automatic response, the, the amygdala which engages when we're, when we're experiencing particularly negative emotions. Um, the signals that our brains receive engage all those receptors within the brain which are kind of keeping us alert. And in fact what get, kind of gets cut out of the picture is the prefrontal cortex which is the rational part of our brain, the more developed part of our brain which many mammals don't have, which is where we engage our our cognitive thinking processes. So when we activate the parasympathetic, it it calms our nervous system, it calms, um, if you like, in very broad terms, it calms the limbic area. And it's as if, you know, the signals from our hypothalamus are, are able to reach our prefrontal cortex. It's as if well, in fact, it's not even as if, as if it's actually what happens is that um, the receptors in the prefrontal cortex wake back up. And as they engage, we are able to broaden our perspective. And we know this, don't we, that when we feel calmer, when we're resting and digesting, when we're sitting back and looking calmly at what's happening it's as if we go from you know from this kind of tunnel vision when we're stressed to a kind of broader perspective and it's it's simply because that part of our brain is activated so that's what's happening physiologically and what we can feel you know just in terms of our felt sense of what's happening is karma So let's practice. So in the email I sent you to prepare for our session on Tuesday, I suggested that you choose your space. And I think it can be really important and and, and of great service to our practice to consciously think about the space that we're going to do it in. It can be here, as I am, in front of your computer. It's fine. Um, But it might be that you prefer to go and sit on the sofa or sit on the floor. I quite like sitting cross-legged on a cushion on the floor because I like the connection with the floor, but you don't have to do that. But what matters is that you think before you start about where you're going to do it. So you choose your space, you might have a glass of water, you might light a candle, and, and then think about how you're going to sit. If you're sitting in a chair, think about First of all, think about your feet. So as you're sitting in your chair, and as I'm sitting here now, I'm just checking where my feet are and checking that the soles of my feet are on the floor. And then imagining, I'm just going to close my eyes for a minute to help me imagine that the soles of my feet are connected with the floor, connected with the ground beneath, and then more deeply, if you like, into the earth. Now, where I'm sitting now, I'm actually on the second floor of our building, but I'm imagining I'm connected with the earth. And then I'm bringing my awareness, and I invite you to bring your awareness to your sitting bones. Oh, I'm sitting on a seat, on a chair, on the floor, connecting my sitting bones with that surface. And oh, there are my sitting bones. And how's my pelvis? Am I leaning back? Am I leaning forward? Am I more or less centered? And from the base of my spine, from the coccyx, up through the sacrum, and up right through my spine, am I I kind of lifted? So if you're not, kind of have a sense of of a thread, a silken thread moving up through your spine and through the back of your neck, and as if it was tugging 
gently through the top of your head. So not to kind of, you know, force yourself to sit upright because that's not natural, but imagine that this, this silken thread is following the shape of your spine. And as you might lengthen the back of your neck, allow your shoulders to fall away and let go. Allow your arms to feel a little, a little heavy and allow your hands to rest on your thighs, either palms up or palms down, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you feel grounded and stable and alert and that your, your body, you're consciously engaging with your body in such a way that it supports your practice. So here we are, we've chosen our space. We've chosen you know, to engage with our body and to think about how we're sitting. We've brought an awareness to our feet and our sitting bones and our spine and our shoulders and our arms and hands. And now, before we begin, we might close our eyes or lower our gaze. I'm going to lower my gaze today for this, but I often close my eyes. And the reason for that is to, is if you like, to dis disengage any visual stimulation to help you concentrate. So having closed your eyes or lowered your gaze, bring your awareness to your breath. Simply become aware of your breath. Notice the breath coming into your body, through your mouth or through your nostrils. Coming in, perhaps feeling it, a sensation in your throat. Notice the rise of your chest, perhaps, of your abdomen. Notice the breath coming in and its impact on your body. And as you breathe out, notice the flow of breath out of your body. Notice that your abdomen, your chest, kind of deflate. And that the air leaving your nostrils probably feels a little warmer than the air that came in. Just stay with your breath for a few seconds simply noticing it's coming and going. And I want to offer you three simple mantras for helping you come into this present moment and stay in this present moment. So the first is this, breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In. Out. So for a few seconds, Repeat the mantra to yourself. Breathing in. I know I am breathing in. Breathing out. I know I am breathing out. In. Out.
In the second mantra, we're focusing on our body. So breathing in, I am aware of my body. Breathing out, I smile at my body. Breathing in, aware of my body. Breathing out, smiling. So again, spend a few seconds repeating this mantra to yourself as you breathe. Breathing in, aware of my body. Breathing out, a smile at my body. Aware of my body. Smiling. And the third mantra is about focusing on this moment. And the sense that in this moment, you are home. Breathing in, I am home. Breathing out, in the here, now. So for the next few seconds, or minute or so, repeat this mantra as you breathe. Breathing in, I am home. Breathing out, here, now. In, home. Out, here, now. When you're ready, gently open your eyes or lift your gaze. So I hope that was helpful. It was a very broad overview as our introduction to meditation. We'll be exploring all of this a lot more over the course of the next months. But I hope for the moment that was helpful. Thank you.